Good morning. What is the main thing that brings defilement? We're looking today at Mark 7. There's 23 verses here, so we won't read them all, but let's begin at verse 1. Then the Pharisees and some of the scribes came together to him, having come from Jerusalem. Now when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defile, that is, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat, unless they wash their hands in a special way, holding the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other things which they have received and hold, like the washing of cups, pitchers, copper vessels, and couches. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with uh, unwashed hands? Jesus answered and said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Jesus goes on and gives examples of ways that they've nullified God's word by their traditions. People are asking questions about what Jesus said, so we pick it up at verse 18. So he said to them, Are you thus without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him, because it does not enter his heart but his stomach, and is eliminated, thus purifying all foods? And he said, What comes out of a man, that defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murderers, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. What are the main things that bring defilement? Well, it's very easy to get together a bunch of religious traditions. And you wash your hands a certain way and let the water drip off your elbow in a certain way and wash your cup a certain way. And it's easy to get those things together because, you know what, instead of heart change, it's easier to go through the traditions and say, you know, check things off, check things off the list. Well, I washed my hands the correct way. I did it just exactly the, as according to the tradition of the elders. But actually, those things don't purify a person. In fact, those things very often become, can become substitutes for heart obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus is unsparing. Your heart is far from me. It's, it's a very strong line he takes. Now some have also taken this business and they look at this passage and the one we read where it sounds like it purifies all meats. People think that this has to do with uh, cleansing unclean meat. Now we can eat bacon. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, no, that's, that's really not what's going on here. Remember verses 2 and 3? What this is about, it's about the tradition of the elders. It's about the how you wash your hands. It's about ceremonial defilement because you supposedly don't wash your hands the correct way. It's not about clean and unclean meats. In fact, the word for foods here is not one that means flesh meat, like clean and unclean flesh meat. It just means, means food in general. So what you've got going on here is really it's, this is about these religious traditions that bind us that are not any real use to us. In fact, they actually can become positive danger to us when we avoid the hard thing. What we have here is choices. Look at what we have. Jesus said the things that truly defile a person, those are the things that come from the heart. Evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, and so on. These are attitudes. These are chosen attitudes. Meticulous following of tradition isn't, isn't what we need. What we really need is we need to plead with God that our heart will be open to Him so that He can work in our heart and change the very way, the very things that we're thinking of and the very things we're desiring, change our desires. And when God changes our desires, what beautiful things will come out of our heart to our loved ones, our children, our spouse, our friends. And so Jesus says, be careful of the things that are the real things, the serious things. The Pharisees have a bunch of issues they're trying to create over here, but I want your heart. That's what God always wants. He wants our heart. So no, this isn't licensed to eat bacon, sorry. Eat something healthy. Get some avocado. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you for the clearness of the context here that this is about these traditions that aren't so much use after all. So, Lord, we want to be Bible people. We don't want to set aside your commandments for the commandments of men. Instead, Lord, we want to give our whole hearts to you. We want Jesus to be in our heart, Lord. So this is our request today. Please come into our hearts and help us to surrender anything anything at all that stands in the way of being a follower of Jesus. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God be with you today and watch over you. Don't settle for these uh, cheap substitutes. Don't settle for, for salted substitutes here. Hey, let's go straight to the real deal and let's get the Word of God and get that into our life. God be with you.